Good morning, my little nerds. I am Dr. Shireen Idris, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Every Saturday morning, we do a pillow talk. Get your asses out of bed, get your pens and papers ready. Today, we are going to dive in deep into the world of Korean sunscreens. Who the hell am I? I'm Dr. Shireen Idris, a board certified dermatologist. I'm here to help you help yourself, empower yourself through knowledge so you can navigate the bullshitty, noisy world of the beauty industry. Plus, I'm also here to help you help yourself when it comes to cosmetic procedures, medical conditions, and life, if you want to take it from me. Feel free to sign up to pillowtalkderm.com, our newsletter where you can be in the know and you can communicate directly with me. So, Testing viral K-beauty sunscreens is the topic of the day because very honestly, the sunscreens we have in the US are not great. They're really antiquated and they're old and they're not ahead of the curve, not in the technology sense and not in the ingredient story sense. And it needs to be something that we as a country really push for better regulations around. Why the hell are we so behind in the US? Because sunscreens are considered an over-the-counter drug, which by the way, I totally support because you don't want to have some random brand say, this carrot extract is going to protect your skin to an SPF. We don't need that crap and we need to make sure that what we're getting is actually legit. So I support that, but we do need to work on moving at a faster pace and changing with the times because the last time a UV filter was approved in the US was crickets 1999 before y2k and i bet you a lot of you don't even know what y2k is because it was a long long time ago which is really embarrassante so that is why when you look towards asia and you look towards australia and even europe they're more advanced when it comes to sunscreens because they have come a much longer way a much further way and they've really developed and honed in on different types of filters the other reason why it's so hard for the us to actually push forward a new uv filter is because companies have to submit and have to be willing to invest money behind new ingredients not knowing whether or not the government is going to go ahead and approve that filter so you can end up going millions out of your pocket trying to get a new UV filter approved and at the end of the day it's a gamble and it's not approved and nobody wants to take that bet so unless we have a Robin Hood or some bajillionaire philanthropist who's willing to do it for us or quite honestly one of the massive conglomerates like L'Oreal who want to try to pave the way for the smaller indie brands it's really going to be hard to do personally i would much rather invest in r d and things that i know you guys could use than spend all my money and potentially go bankrupt having started my own brand and not have some sort of guarantee that it's going to get approved or that i could even use it so that is the real deal. So how do we evaluate sunscreens? When you're looking at sunscreens, right, you know what SPF stands for by now. It's sun protection factor. And it basically tells you that the amount of time that the sun is going to take to get you to have any sort of minimal redness dose on your skin. It extends that time. So if it took you five minutes to get red with SPF 30, it's going to probably be 30 times five, 150 minutes to get red. That's sort of how it works, but that's not the full story. Sun protection also protects against two types of ultraviolet rays, UVA and UVB. UVA, A stands for aging. The UV rays that give that, you know, instant aging effect over, not instant, some people instant, aging effect over time, wrinkling, etc. UVB stands for burning, that instant reddening and the burning usually associated with the sun. Most recently, broad spectrum SPF has to incorporate both UVA and UVB. And that is the type of sunscreen you always want to look for if you're shopping for a sunscreen in the US. You want something that covers for both. You want to look for the broad spectrum on the sunscreen. Now, if we take a flight and go to Korea, SPF doesn't cover for both. And you're probably thinking to yourself, what the hell? So how is it better? because they're more specific. SPF in Asia covers for UVB. They have another rating scale when it comes to UVA protection, and that's their PA rating scale. And you've seen this on numbers of bottles where you see PA++++ or PA+, or PA++. So the PA system is the protection against UVA. Now, both UVA and UVB can cause skin cancer, but you want to really know what you're getting. This is how you know. It is 
It's based on the PPD, the persistent pigment darkening, the color that is left behind from UVA. It goes up to 4 plus. So PA plus offers some UV protection, approximately 50 to 75 percent. PA plus plus offers 75 to 88 percent UVA protection. PA triple plus, so three pluses, is a high UVA protection with 88 to 94 percent. And anything PA plus 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 offers more than 94 percent UVA protection. So clearly the higher the plus is, the better it goes, but the most number of pluses you can get is four. Today we're going to go ahead and test 11 different sunscreens all of which are SPF 50 across the board in terms of UVB protection. And out of the 11, only two are PA 3 pluses. The rest are all PA 4 pluses. So we are going to start off with hybrid sunscreens. And hybrid sunscreens combine both physical and chemical, quote unquote, filters in them. We cannot talk about Korean beauty sunscreens without talking about my favorite sunscreen, which is the beauty of Joshan. I absolutely fell in love with this particular sunscreen. It retails for $18. The reason I love it is because not only does it cover for all of UVA, UVB, it is extremely lightweight in texture and it goes on so silky smooth. It does not irritate the eyes. It is hydrating, so if somebody is a little bit oily and doesn't want to use a moisturizer underneath their sunscreen, you absolutely do not need one. And if you are dry and you think you're not that dry, this might just be enough in terms of a moisturizer with sun protection. The other reason I love it is because it doesn't really have hyaluronic acid. It has four different filters. Two of them, which I find interesting, are the Tinazorb M, which has, by the way, been around since 2002, so the fact that it's not approved in the US blows my mind. It is a hybrid in between a physical and a chemical sunscreen, and it works really well in combination with other UV filters. It is clearly not available in the US. There is also something called Iscotrizinol, also known as diethylhexylbutamidotriazone, which is a very oil-soluble UV filter, and I like it because it is suitable for water water resistant, water repelling formulations. It is great for activity use, especially if you're somebody who is a runner, who wants to be running outside, etc. Other key ingredients as niacinamide, which helps with your barrier function, and glycerin based. J'adore. So this one is the beauty of Joe Sean. FYI, for all of these sunscreens, do not buy them on Amazon because you do not know who you're buying it from, I will link them below. How the hell they sell them in the US, I do not know. But if they have figured out some loophole to get around, God bless, because at least we can get access to some of these sunscreens. The second one that I really like is by the brand Perito. So I'm gonna talk about two Perito sunscreens. This is their daily go-to sunscreen. It is an SPF 50 plus with PA4 pluses. It is also both a chemical and a physical sunscreen with five different filters. Tinazorb M that I just talked about in the beauty of Joe Shaw, but it also has one known as Juvenile T150. This is exohexyl triazone. It is extremely photostable in absorption of all available UVB filters today. And it's a newer generation of a chemical sunscreen. Additionally, there is some titanium dioxide in this, which is a classic physical filter that we have in the US, as well as two other ones, which I'll talk about in one of the other products that we're gonna cover. It has Centella Asiatica, which is nice to help calm your skin. And it also has an antioxidant known as Medecaside. It retails for $21. I think I prefer this one if you have dry skin. It does not leave a white cast and it has a nice creamy texture as you just saw. If you have oily skin, Perito has this particular one called the Daily Soft Touch Sunscreen, which is a combination of three different filters, the Juvenil T150, Juvenil A, and Tinazorb S. It covers for basically the whole gamut from UVA to UVB, like the other two sunscreens, but it also has ceramides in here. So it's great for winter. It's great if you have a broken skin barrier, but what's fascinating about this particular one is when you apply it, it goes in and dries pretty fast. So I would say this is probably one of the better ones if you have oily skin and you don't want to feel like a slick grease ball. 
shifting into only chemical sunscreens because those three were hybrids. They contained combinations of both chemical and physical. We are going to now talk about only chemical sunscreens. The first one is the one that has only a PA3 plus rating. So remember what that means. It only covers 88, if I'm not mistaken, to 94% UVA protection. It is not the highest in terms of UVA, but it is SPF 50 in terms of UVB. It's one by Misha. It's called Essence Sun milk. Um, it has five different filters, including some US-based filters like avobenzone, octocrylene, octosalicylate, and octinoxate, but it has tinazorb S as well. And tinazorb S is a UVB filter, a very strong UVB filter available outside of the US. Over here, it is lightweight, pretty easy to apply. It goes on very, very watery. You don't really feel it, but I will say a little bit sensitive around the eyes. So if you have sensitive skin, not necessarily my favorite one. There's no white cast and it is very lightweight. Next up is one that very embarrassingly, my colleague at work bought from Amazon, which I <laughs> reprimanded him for. You never want to buy any sunscreen, especially not a Korean beauty one on Amazon because I don't know where this one was made, so I'm not going to be applying this one to my face. He bought it off of Amazon. I will link it below where you should potentially buy it from. But this is Bure's UV Aqua Rich Watery Gel. It's 10 bucks. PA4 Plus, it has four different filters, including Octinoxate, which is that US1 plus three filters that are not approved in the US, Uvenil A, Uvenil T, and Tinazorb S. It has glycerin arginine, which is an amino acid and a primary building block for collagen, but it also has like a bajillion types of hyaluronic acid in it. So it's not my favorite, but people seem to like it. He tends to be very oily and he claims that it leaves no oily residue, but I told him he should just try the Perito Daily Soft Touch Sunscreen instead. Then we have Isentree. This one had a massive boom, I would say about like 10 months ago on social media. It's their Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel SPF 50. It retails for $26.50. It is a chemical sunscreen. You guys probably know if you know me by now, I don't love hyaluronic acid, not just because I don't think it is as hydrating as people claim it is, but more so because when you have low molecular weight hyaluronic acid, low molecular weight hyaluronic acid tends to be more pro-inflammatory. It's what actually occurs in a wound when your skin breaks down, your it gets broken down into smaller pieces, and that triggers an inflammatory response to allow for wound healing. I've noticed it in patients who have rosacea that their skin tends to be more red when they do use a hyaluronic acid serum in my practice, and that is sort of how all of this HA situation has been brought about when it comes to my perspective on using topical low molecular rate hyaluronic acid. But I will say it is very elegant. It is very smooth. You can see why people like applying it on their face. And if you're not sensitive and it's the only HA product you wanna use, knock yourself out. There is no scent at all. And I will say it is beautifully formulated if you wanna give it a try. Then we have Claire's All Day Airy Sunscreen for $21. Again, pay for plus, it has four different filters, including the Uvenil T, Tinazorb S, Uvenil A, and one known as Parsol SLX, which is a UVB filter, but it doesn't cover the whole gamut of UVB. It covers, I think, from 290 to approximately 320. You guys can see it below. This one, has niacinamide as well as an anti-acne ingredient known as Berberis vulgaris root extract. So if you have acne and you wanna have something in there to kind of help a little bit with acne, it's very easy, very easy to use, very lightweight, um, fragrance-free, no white cast. I would say it absorbs easily in my hand. I've literally applied now like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sunscreens. My hand does not feel gross, surprisingly, from all of these sunscreens. Next up, interesting one, one known as Tokobo Bio Watery Sunscreen, and this sunscreen, and this one retails for 20 bucks. Why is this one interesting? This one is interesting because it has a UV filter also known as Mixoral SX or Tyriphthalidine Dicamphor Sulfonic Acid. Why do I care about this particular UV filter? This particular UV filter was originally proprietary to L'Oreal. 
Remember what I said at the beginning of this video, you need a large company to push forward a UV filter so you can get approved. L'Oreal did just that, but they did it in 1989 and the patent has run out, but you will only really find this filter in L'Oreal brands like La Roche-Posay, Garnier, Vichy, uh, L'Oreal. Those are all L'Oreal company, under the L'Oreal company brands, so they all have had access to this UV filter. Most recently, because the patent I think has run out, uh, K-Beauty brands are using the filter as well. This is Tokobo. It also has Tinazorb S. It also has the Uvenil that I talked about and the Parsol SLX. So when you're thinking of Tokobo, you're covering UVA and UVB. In addition, it is very watery, as you guys can see super super lightweight i think if you're oily this is a great one because it just glides on and disappears completely it has niacinamide and it also has antibacterial ingredients scudelaria bicalensis root extract and philodendron amurensi bark extract so those are all of my liquid sunscreens and because i think sunscreens are interesting when they come in different formulations uh, i'm going to talk about two sticks and one powder now sticks and powders are not supposed to be your mainstay source of sunscreen it's not the first thing i use during the day but if you live in a city if you're out and about and running around and you just want to have a touch-up or a light reapplication i'm all for them but i'm not for them as your main source of sunscreen that's number one number two know that you need a lot more than what the aad says says which is i think four swipes quite frankly it's more if you want to get the adequate coverage but if you are again wearing your makeup going from meeting meeting and trying to do your best to get some sun protection something is better than nothing so don't freak yourself completely out and trying to get a million swipes all over your face so tokobo the same one i just talked about has a sunscreen stick as you guys can see i love the clicker it just feels very very efficient it's very lightweight it doesn't feel greasy at all cynic is another brand down here which looks like that other european brand that i'm blanking on at the moment with the blue and the orange it looks pretty similar surprised anyway this guy is spf 50 as well it retails from 10 to 14 dollars it has five different filters as well very easy to apply again a lot more is going to be needed than what you think and it has green tea licorice root and it has a little bit of a natural sort of scent to it even though it has no fragrance and then last is vt which looks like makeup very pretty very elegant i'm surprised tiffany has not come after them for the blue <laughs> all of these brands that are basically using other brands colors and this is what it looks like this one has in it zinc oxide so you might feel like you get a little bit of a white or blue cast because i don't know why they would put a blue dye very honestly in something like this it's not really a powder it's more of a cream kind of situation and it feels very silicone-y but again it's blue not necessarily my favorite but interesting in terms of just trying to get a light dab for reapplication purposes on the high points of your face where we tend to get skin cancer But that is that, and that one retails for $14.20. So with that, we have rounded up Korean sunscreens. My hands will be protected for life with the amount of sunscreen that I applied on the back of my hands. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, let me know below. I've linked them below, and I will see you guys next Saturday. Have a beautiful weekend.